Welcome to part 2 of lecture 6, Business Continuity Planning. So quality assurance techniques, so looking at your quality assurance is a critical part of your business continuity planning. So you need to review your BCP to ensure that the plan is working. You want to review for accuracy of the plan, relevance and effectiveness. Because there's no plan, no point in having a plan in place that is not working. This plan is critical, as you know, in order to bring your business back up and running in the shortest time possible, in order to continue providing those critical goods and services you, you have identified. So continuous appraisal of your BCP should be carried out. As part of that process of quality assurance and continuous appraisal, you can have two types of review. You can have an internal review. An internal review would be carried out within the confines of your organization, um, usually by a team selected. And this would, be, um, this would be a process of auditing, internal auditing. This can be done annually or biannually. It should be done when changes occur to your threat environment. Um, for example, something as simple as having new employees or, or having additional employees changes your environment. When you have other major changes in the organization that takes place, maybe you're carrying out new types of operations and processes, um, you should also have review after and en after any exercise to ensure that findings are cooperated, incorporated. So once you've had exercises and training, you want to review as well. Then you can carry out external reviews. So the external reviews, the um, procedures would be used to determine critical services and um, processes. So as part of review, you Again, you want to determine if these critical services and processes um, have been addressed adequately. You want to look at your, your methodologies for your BCP. Are they accurate? Is it comprehensive? And your external review, this is necessary in order to gain an impartial assessment of the effectiveness of your BCP. Because remember, with your internal review, these would have been the persons who actually created the BCP. So you need a fresh pair of eyes without any particular agenda reviewing and assessing your BCP. So what do you do when a disruption actually occurs? There are three steps that need to be taken. First there's response, continuation of your critical services and recovery and restoration. So with response, response involves the deployment of the teams, the plans and measures and arrangements that you would already have put in place. So you must have a response plan as part of your BCP. So your response would be accomplished by incident management. Now incident management, if you recall, um, you have the option of having an incident command system within your organization. So incident management can be implemented and achieved through an ICS. What are some of the tasks that will be carried out in incident um, um, management? It would be notifying management, employees, and other stakeholders that an incident has occurred. They would assume control of the situation, identify the range and scope of damage, so that will be assessment implementing the plans that have been developed, identifying infrastructure outages, and coordinating support from internal and external sources. So if you recall, many of these tasks and responsibilities should be familiar because they also line up with the tasks and responsibilities of an incident command system. You must also have communications management. So it's essential to control rumors. Anytime you have an incident, you need to make sure you have factual information out there because uncontrolled rumors can create a secondary incident. You want to maintain contact with the media, emergency contacts and vendors. So communication facilities must be in place. 
you should have all your contact information, your database with all of these essential um, persons. You want to ensure that employees, the public and all stakeholders have, um, you want to assure them that the, the incident is under control, that you have a plan. And as we discussed in previous lessons, your your stakeholders or all the persons who could be affected, they want to know what you are doing about it. So you must have a communication plan in place. So the requirements for communication management necessities creating a communications plan to address all these requirements. So this communications plan is like a sub plan of your BCP. You must also have operations management in place. So for that to happen, we're talking about uh, facilities in place to implement the, um, to, to facilitate the implementation of your response. So the presence of an EOC, an emergency operations center, can be used to manage operations in the event of a disruption. Remember that's a centralized location that coordinates information and resources that come in and out related to the management of the um, emergency. So the EOC management and documentation helps effectiveness and efficiency of your response. Continuation is also an important part of your response and recovery restoration process. Um, so continuation ensures that all sensitive, all time sensitive, critical services and goods or products are continuously delivered, or that there is no disruption longer than is necessary or permissible. So remember, a, a major goal of your BCP is to ensure continuation of your operations, recovery and restoration. So the goal is to recover the facility or operations and maintain service or product delivery. Some of the things that would be involved in recovery and restoration would be to redeploy personnel. So one disruption may have taken place, let us say for example for a short period, and once it is safe to continue you want to send your personnel back on the job. Um, you want to decide whether to repair the facilities relocate a different site or build a new facility this would be part of the assessment process after the disruption you want to acquire additional resources where necessary uh, whether it's new equipment additional um, resources etc so this would be required for maintaining operations and you would also want to re-establish normal operations because oftentimes when we try to re-establish operations after a disruption you may not be able to carry out normal operations in terms of for example an eight hour period etc so your goal would be to re-establish normal operations and resume operations at pre-disruption levels so here on this slide i actually have a summary of the entire business continuity plan concept so this would be a nice summary slide for you to review in preparation for your um, your various written exams for example um, at the center here this is what we are looking at is an example of a concept map the main theme is business continuity planning which is at the center out of here we know one of the first things we have to do is then identify several things before we can develop our business continuity plan we would want to identify our key assets our key assets would be things like maybe our building our different physical assets stocks etc it may involve things like um, our customers etc what are the vital services? Remember, we have to identify vital or, or critical services or goods and, and prioritize them to be addressed. Threats. What are the threats to our um, operations? And what are the risks? So here, we look at um, some examples of various threats. 
threats may come in the form of natural disasters such as earthquakes, hurricanes, flood. Threats may be accidents such as fires, utility outage. They may be malicious such as sabotage, terrorism or cyber attacks. There may be market threats such as consumer trends. Consumer trends may change and affect your business. Other threats may be political in terms of legislation, maybe certain types of legislation that are not favorable to your business. So once you have this information, you can now begin looking at risk, planning for your risk. That would involve identification of your risk. What is the likelihood of it happen or the severity of it? What are your mitigation options related to your risk? Can you avoid it, reduce it or transfer it completely? How do I respond? But how do I respond to an event and how do I recover from it? You also look at your staff, staff training and communication as part of your business continuity plan. And of course, please be reminded you must periodically update and re review and update your business continuity plan. So this brings us to the end of this week's lesson. Thank you for joining me and please proceed to this week's activity.